Hi, I'm Ali from A Girl Named Ali, and you're watching Disney Channel. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Ali and today we're discussing things that brought me joy this year. So as you know, this year was a lot. I laughed, I cried, I danced, I ate and I had many epiphanies. But I'm here today to spread some positivity and tell you about the things that I actually love this year. Plus, if you stick around to the end, I will give you a little bonus round of my worst purchases of this year that I regret. So stay tuned for that. So I've made sure to have quite a range of prices in this video. I've got, you know, things that are really cheap, inexpensive from Kmart, as well as things that, well, are not from Kmart. So hopefully there's something for everyone. Okay, first things first, let's talk clothes. So I, like everyone else this year, felt in love with matching sets and sort of monochromatic outfits, very just kind of things that tie in really well. So in particular, there are three different matching sets this year that I got that I wanted to share with you guys. The first is an active wear set. It's from Organic Basics, which is like an amazing, obviously organic active wear line. These are the softest, comfiest leggings I have ever worn. And obviously the matching bra is just a super cute little addition. I've never had like a matching active wear set before and I just feel so put together when I wear it. I've only worn it once for exercise and the rest has just kind of been like day to day sitting around the house in lockdown or running errands out and about. But one of my biggest insecurities is my hip dips, just sort of the way that my hips fall. And I feel like I just have, I don't know, a body type that I don't see represented as often. And when I wear these leggings, because they are like thinner than my say Lululemon leggings, they kind of expose that a little bit more, but it's been a really nice challenge for me to actually get used to that and I don't know, just be more confident in my body. So I, I'm learning to love that. The second matching set that I got is this beautiful green loungewear set, I guess. And this was just such a staple for me during like winter and lockdown and <laughs> everything that's happened this year. It was really nice to have something to sit around in, but also feel a little bit put together, like rather than just wearing trackies and a hoodie all day, I could put on this set and feel like I actually maybe had my life together just a little bit. I don't, but I could feel like it. And thirdly, the last matching set is one that I got from Ganda or Ganda, which is an Australian brand. And this is just a cute little white set. I tried it on and the girl who worked there was just so sweet, kind of hyping me up. So I was like, okay, maybe I should get it. And I'm really glad I did. I've worn this obviously all around the house, like the green one, but I also wore it to the movies the other day. I've kind of figured out ways to dress it up a little bit. And yeah, I just think everyone really deserves to have some nice matching sets in their life. It's kind of changed my whole world a little bit. Okay, next on the list, we have some pieces from my new favorite favorite bikini brand, which is Snorkel Bear. So I have two pieces from them. The first is this beautiful little like 70s number, super gorgeous orangey brown, very warm toned. And this really nice kind of bra cup. I don't really need to worry about like anything falling out because there's just nothing there. But if you are someone with bigger boobs, I've seen on their Instagram, like curvier girls that are bigger than me look so good in these. They just look so good, especially with this cut because it is so supportive. It has an underwire, this keeps everything in. And basically I'm just obsessed with this print. It's so 70s. Oh, and these are the bottoms. They're super cheeky. So I actually wear them back because the front is like teeny tiny and I'd rather have a bit of my butt exposed than the opposite. <laughs> so I wear them backwards. I wear this at the front and then that on the bum and works really well. So there's a little hack for you. If you feel something's just a little bit too scandalous for your personal taste, flip it around. And the second piece, I'm still not over how cute these are. I wore them to my friend's pool the other day and I felt kind of like a Malibu Barbie or something. This is so different to anything I've ever worn, but I showed a snippet of these on my Instagram story and got like 50 DMs immediately being like, that's so cute. Did you thrift it? Where is it from? How beautiful is this? So I guess you can see from the colors why I feel like Barbie when I wear it. I'm just so obsessed with it. I love it when swimwear brands allow you to buy different sizes because I am concave in the top, but I have hips and I have a butt. So I do need to get very different sizes. So kudos to them, 10 out of 10. The next favorite is a makeup slash skincare brand and that is Inica. I've probably mentioned them on my channel before because they're just my all time favorite makeup brand. So this is what my eyelashes look like today. I'm wearing the Inica Bold Lash. I'm also wearing for the first time their Brow Perfector. It's like a mascara tube. 
except it is <laughs> for brows. So it looks like that. And as you can see, it just helps give sort of those really bushy boy brows, like that kind of effect, which I'm a big fan of. In the past, I was doing the soap technique and that actually worked surprisingly. It was like really giving them life and helping them stick up. But this is actually, you know, my shade designed for your eyebrows. And I don't feel like a weirdo putting soap in my hair. But I also love this highlighter. This really doesn't do it justice on camera, but it is so beautifully shiny. Finally, I also got some skincare from them, but I haven't tried it yet. I'm kind of obsessed with how beautiful these little jars are. 2021 is going to be the year that I finally get my skin under control. Because right now, it's just like One Direction. No control. My next favorite is my weighted blanket. If I had to pick one thing that sort of changed my life the most this year, it's probably this. Every time I go to pick it up, I forget that it's actually weighted. Oh. I feel like this is the time that I have to explain. Um, in the past couple of weeks, I lost my dad and also my grandma. So it's been a very hard time, obviously. And one of the things that was the most helpful was this weighted blanket. So I'm pretty sure my boyfriend bought me this. It, the past couple of weeks have been honestly a blur, so I can't be 100% sure if it was him. I think it was, but this has just been so helpful to help me sleep at night. That's obviously really tough at the moment and just having something to sort of weigh you down and just, I don't know, it makes you feel a bit present, but also safe. I don't really know how to explain it, but if you're someone that struggles with anxiety or insomnia or anything like that, I can't recommend this enough. I just, I have it on me in bed. The days that I couldn't get off the couch, I would just have this on me all the time. Depending on your weight, there are different weights that you can buy. So I have, I think the five kilo one, anything heavier than this would probably kill me. There's different colors. There's all different places you can get them from. This has just been so, so helpful. And I I had known about these for ages but never really taken the plunge to get one and I think they are a great investment so if there's something that would help you I 10 out of 10 recommend this um yeah I'm a big fan <laughs> So obviously we couldn't really go shopping this year. Everyone was stuck inside and I couldn't go to any op shops or thrift stores, but I have been to a couple in the past month and I think this might be my best thrift purchase in a long time. I was at a little Sunday market and I found this woman's stall and she had all of these old high fashion pieces, so like Armani and all of these designer brands. And my eyes immediately went to this beautiful Tommy Hilfiger knit jumper. Just take a second and guess how much this cost me. Probably made in the 90s. It's Tommy Hilfiger, classic knit design, classic knit jumper, super warm, super cozy. If you guess anything above $4, you're wrong because this cost me $4, which I'm pretty sure was like how much it cost to park at the market. So yeah, this was a great purchase. I'm very happy about it, but I just missed thrifting so much and we're back, baby, we're back. Since we're on the topic of thrifting, I might as well show you my other very exciting find. So if you follow me on Instagram, you already saw these, but I went to Savers the other week and I just, I don't know if you're ready for these guys. This is something that I've wanted for a long time. They're a little intimidating to wear, but I'm gonna rock them. Look at these boots. You don't understand, I'm obsessed. So these are knee-high boots. I'll probably wear them a bit more in sort of autumn and winter with like knee-high or over-the-knee socks and a skirt and like a little trench coat or something. Oh, I'm so excited. Never been worn my exact size. And when you find something like that in a thrift store, it's just a sign from the universe. You have to get it. So I love these so much. I've been wearing them around the house to sort of get used to wearing it. It's not a huge heel, but for me, that's lived in Ugg boots all year and like doesn't really wear heels. It's a bit of a change. These boots remind me of that episode of Friends where Monica gets those new boots that are super expensive and they turn out to be really painful. And I was like, God, I hope that doesn't happen to me, but they were only 18, 19 dollars. So even if they do cause me pain, pain is beauty. It's worth it. Sometimes you got to sacrifice a bit of pain, bit of your toes <laughs> to look great. So we'll see. Okay, the next favorite is gonna expose myself as the TikTok bitch that I am because I got a galaxy projector. One of my favorite things to do, as you probably know, is go stargazing. I love like laying out in the desert or on top of an RV roof or at my summer camp and just looking up at a huge open sky in the middle of nowhere. And I personally live like basically in a city. So there's just, you can't really see the stars. So having my own galaxy inside my room is just very special. My boyfriend actually surprised me with this and it was just so exciting because one of our first dates in Australia was to a, what are they called? A, 
the thing where all the you see all the stars in a, in a big dome. I know you're all shouting the word at me. Planetarium, planetarium, that's the word. And now I feel like I have one in my own room. So I just lay back in bed, put on my stargazing playlist linked below and just feel like I'm existing in this whole other universe. So it's very peaceful and I really recommend one. Okay, this next favorite is something that I very recently became obsessed with and it is, this is kind of unexpected and random, but it's this Chai Mix from Minor Figures. I think I tried their products first at like a blogger food event that I went to earlier in the year. In fact, I think that was like the last time I did anything in public with people. I've been trying to drink a little bit less coffee recently just because of the old anxiety. It doesn't help. So this has really come in handy, especially at night when I just kind of want to wind down with a hot mug of something but don't want to have any more caffeine. So you put a little bit of that in, a little bit of your favorite milk. Personally, I'm an oat milk bitch. I just think you can't beat it. And then you heat it up and it's so good. So if you want like a really nice, cozy, seasonal, yummy drink, then I cannot recommend this enough. Before we jump into the next 10, I just want to quickly say a big thank you to our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity with topics like illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and so much more. There are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can just really follow along wherever your curiosity takes you. One of the classes I've most been enjoying lately is a photography class by Brandon Walfall. He's someone that I've followed online for years. So it's so cool getting this insight into his journey, his process, and seeing how he gets from A to Z with a concept that then becomes a beautiful photo. Skillshare is also super affordable. A yearly subscription is less than $10 a month to access their huge range of classes. And best of all, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership so you can explore your own creativity. Be sure to grab one of those spots and make the most of all the great content they have on there. Thanks again, Skillshare, for partnering with me on this video. So we need to talk about Taylor Swift, obviously. I made a whole video with my thoughts and feelings and emotions when Folklore came out, so I won't go back over that. However, we do need to talk about Evermore. First of all, how dare she? Second of all, how dare she? I know the phrase like, your fave could never is thrown around a lot, but like literally tell me anyone else that has made three perfect amazing albums in less than a year and a half. Her mind, her mind. I was just so unprepared for this album and it's only just slightly beginning to sink in. I think like every day I listen to it a little bit more and I pick up extra meanings. I find more that sort of I can relate to or I uncover just new parallels to other things that she's written and just, I get overwhelmed by her genius as I'm sure a lot of you do too. I've had a lot of questions about which are my favorite songs on the album. So as of today, they are Gold Rush. I am a rushy, as Jack Antonoff would say. Oh, is that for me? That song just gets me feeling so inspired and amazing. Like it kind of reminds me of The Feels by Maren Morris in the way that it's kind of like the beat feels like someone stepping and like, you know what I mean. <laughs> Plus it reminds me of Harry Styles, so. I also love Ivy. It's just so beautiful. Nobody, no crime, obviously. I'm a country girly, what can I say? Oh, and Tis the Damn Season and Long Story Short. Those are my faves. As of right now, that could change. But please tell me down below what yours are because I just, I love talking about this and I feel like everyone connects differently with different songs. And this just feels like a no skip album to me. Anyway, I'm very overwhelmed, but I do also have a Spotify playlist of my favorite songs from 2020. So if you'd like to see everything that I've been enjoying this year, I'll link that down below. My next favorite thing was the Babysitter's Club series. It all started at the very beginning of seventh grade. I watched this a few months back with a friend of mine over a Netflix party and it was just so wholesome. I was a huge fan of the books growing up. I say that as if I don't still have them on my shelf and like wouldn't happily still read them. So it's a series that meant a lot to me and just gives me beautiful, warm memories of my childhood. So I guess I went into it with the hope that they wouldn't ruin it and they absolutely did not. They really grabbed all of the best parts of like the 90s nostalgia of the books, but combined that with sort of modern day things and Oh my god, the girls are just so beautiful. So if you want to see a beautiful example of like female friendship, definitely watch it. It is such easy viewing and I think it'll just leave you feeling super warm and happy and positive and inspired and like just in love with these girls. <laughs> Next favorite is Friday Night Lights, baby. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Can't lose! 
I had been slowly trucking along watching the first two seasons over a couple of years and then I finally watched the, the final three seasons this year and I'm so glad I did. This show is kind of filling the One Tree Hill shaped hole in my heart. In lockdown this year, it was just so nice to escape into the small town world of Dillon, Texas. My favorite characters were Riggins, of course, and Tammy, which of course, Tammy Taylor might be one of my favorite all-time fictional characters. That woman is a powerhouse. Kim Riggins reminds me of long hair Harry, and I just like I just want the best for him. I want him to have good things in this world. Oh my god, also Michael B. Jordan and Jeremy Sumter, aka Peter Pan. That was so unexpected and so fun to see them sort of at this early stage in their career. It's just it's great. It's got a cult following for a reason. I loved it. So now I've started watching the OC. Welcome to the OC, bitch. I don't know if technically I could include this on my favorites list because I'm barely a season in, but pretty much I just wanted you all to know that I'm watching it because I got absolutely roasted on Instagram when I mentioned on there that I haven't seen it before and this is my first time watching it, so... I was a One Tree Hill girly. I feel like you're either one or the other. You know, you're an East Coast or a West Coast girl. If you've seen both, let me know which you prefer. At this point, I think I'm gonna be a One Tree Hill stand till the day I die, but the OC is making some solid points. Sandy Cohen is absolutely my favorite character by far. Summer? What are you doing, Gil? I also really like Luke, even though I feel like the writers took his character and completely <laughs> wiped it and gave him a new one. And I get the feeling that Julie Cooper is gonna have like a real glow up in terms of personality and life and confidence. And like, I just, I see for her this vision of being an independent self-made woman. Currently she's still dating her best friend's dad and sleeping with her daughter's ex-boyfriend. But I have faith. Okay, now onto one of my cheapest favorites. This one in particular is for my Aussie subscribers. And this is one of my favorite Kmart finds. Let me just say, I've never smelled a better candle in my life. The scent is espresso martini. And when I tell you this smells like heaven, Oh my God. If you have a Kmart near you or online, get one. I promise you will not regret it. Okay, next on my favorites is YouTubers I've been watching. So I absolutely have to mention the beautiful, wonderful, sweet, sweet girl that is Emma. Emma and I became friends earlier this year when I found one of her videos, binged like five more of her videos. We started commenting back and forth and within about three days, we were texting about how we were soulmates and how we can't wait to hang out. She lives across the world. like all of my friends do. She's been one of the best additions into my life in 2020 and I tell her that all the time. If you like tier ranking videos or anything pop culture related, you will love her videos. They are so entertaining and I think you'll just fall in love with her personality like I have. I'll link her channel below and I'll also link my friends Bonnie and M. They made a channel this year called Chats and Reacts. They basically just talk about music. It's, it's pretty much become a Taylor Swift channel because Taylor's just done so much in the past year. Because I wasn't able to be with my best friends when Evermore dropped, it was really nice for me to be able to watch their video and hear them react to everything and just kind of experience it vicariously through them. So I'll link that video down below as well. I have to mention Mike's Mike, of course, always a classic, always a fave. I really, really love tier rankings and that kind of video. I love watching them. I think they're really entertaining. So I'll link him too. Lately, I've just been watching a lot of New York apartment hunting vlogs. Not that that's something that I'm doing, but I think I just love living vicariously through them. It's just a really interesting process. So that's what I've been watching lately. I'm starting to plan my content for next Next year. So if there's anything in particular that you would like to see me make, comment it down below. Let me know. I'm open to anything really. Okay. And my second last favorite is, well, this. <laughs> so I don't know if any of you are familiar with the movie Pollyanna, but it's one of my favorite books and films from when I was a kid. Pollyanna loved looking for things to be glad about. One of the things Pollyanna loved was these prisms that create like a rainbow reflection on the walls. bad, is it? And that's basically exactly what this paper does. So you can buy this and stick it on your window and it creates them on your walls. And this is just such a nice little way to spruce up your space, I guess. The majority of my subscribers are actually in the Northern Hemisphere. So I know you guys are going through winter right now. So this might even be something that could just sort of help get you through like a darker period, literally, and also like emotionally. Adding something like this to your room could really sort of brighten up the space. Plus it's rainbow, so. Okay, right. Okay, and finally for my last favorite of 2020, drum roll please. <laughs> this is gonna sound so dorky, but it's you guys. I just constantly feel so, for lack of a better word, blessed to have the amazingly positive and supportive and uplifting community that I do both on here and on Instagram. And I, I just, I don't know how I ever got so lucky, but you are all so wonderful, not only to me, but to each other, which that is just what makes me the proudest. I just feel really freaking lucky. Um, 
I'm gonna cry. I really did not, did not expect to cry in this video, but um, yeah, it's obviously been a really challenging year. Um, but one of the side effects of going through hard times is realizing how lucky you are to have really special people that you care about and that care about you. So, <laughs> oh man, wow. Um, yeah, I guess I just wanted to say thank you for that. So thank you to everyone that has sent me a lovely message this year. This is the first video of mine you're seeing. I'm so sorry. I don't usually cry online, but I do cry a lot in person. Also, when I'm lucky enough to meet you guys in person, that just like makes my whole day. So if you do ever see me out and about anywhere in the world, please come and say hi because that just makes me so happy. Anyway, I guess I just wanted to say for all that, thank you and Merry Christmas. To be honest, I kind of hate Christmas, but I'm trying to get in the holiday spirit this year. So here's to me trying. Let me stop crying and then I'll do a bonus round for my worst purchases and the things that I regret. So my first worst purchase of 2020 was my American working visa. Yeah, that's a real funny one. The second disappointing purchase this year was my watch. So I know a lot of people use Apple watches now. I personally don't. And not because I'm not like other girls. I mean, I am an Aquarius, so it's more just that I'm a little bit overwhelmed by technology and don't like the idea of being kind of constantly contactable, I guess. I don't know. I'm not tech phobic, but I am overwhelmed. I'm not superstitious, but I'm, I am a little stitious. So a lot of you will probably know I had the same like Casio calculator watch for like 10 years and I decided to finally upgrade this year, treat myself to this beautiful gold version. So it looks like this and you might be thinking, Ali, why is there no numbers showing on that dial? Yeah, that's because um, I went in the ocean and it immediately stopped working. It says water resistant, but I guess it's not waterproof. So now it's just an accessory. And finally, my last questionable purchase of 2020. It's this puffer jacket. <laughs> And I know what you might be thinking, Ali, what are you talking about? This jacket looks beautiful on you. You know, it's it's a beautiful color. The thing is, I bought this off a Facebook ad, which that was my first mistake. It's this New Zealand brand and I, I just fell in love with it. It looked beautiful on the models. And so I was like, it's a little bit expensive, but I'll just do it. I'll bite the bullet and get myself a nice, beautiful puffer jacket. What I failed to realize was it said one size fits all. Spoiler alert, one size does not fit all. So ignore the pants that I'm wearing this with. It doesn't like suit the outfit, but this is just to show you what it looks like. Okay, now that I'm seeing this on camera, it doesn't look too bad, but in person, this is just huge. I feel like a snowman or a marshmallow or the Michelin man or something, but I have decided I'm gonna keep it because I love the color. Like you can't tell me this is not the most beautiful blue you've ever seen. The real reason I'm keeping it is because the company said no returns, but. I'm a clown. I'm gonna take it to a tailor and get it sort of just fitted to my size. And maybe next winter you'll see me strutting my stuff in this beautiful puffer jacket. So I guess all in all, not too many regrets. I don't know how to finish out a video where I <laughs> laughed and cried and talked about silly things and serious things. But if this ends up being my last video for 2020, I just wanna say thank you guys for the support and the love that you all showed me this year. And I'm just constantly like on the daily reminded of how fortunate and how lucky I am. I better go before I cry again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Give it a big thumbs up if you did like it. It really helps my channel out. Make Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell down below so you get notified when I post and I will see you next time. Bye!